Today's is really a, a, a basic introduction to um, what linguists, who are people who um, make it their business to study properties of human language, uh, have said about language. Um, I sometimes identify myself as a linguist. I'm technically, you may not, uh, you may find this amusing, I'm technically an experimental psycholinguist. And uh, my uh, 14-year-old daughter finds that amusing. She tells her friend, my dad's an experimental psycholinguist, and she uh, uses that to scare her friends who wonder who the heck the person is that's giving them a ride. Uh, but what an experimental psycholinguist does is, uh, um, is to use theories from linguistics to make predictions about how language is used by, uh, by human beings, how it's acquired by children and by people learning English or uh, language, uh, a second language. Um, so I'm a linguist of sorts, um, but often when I, when I tell people on the street I'm a linguist, one of the things they might ask is, how many languages do you speak? And then I say that, that a linguist is not really necessarily a polyglot. A polyglot is somebody who speaks a lot of languages. A linguist is somebody who just uh, uh, looks at, at uh, and understands things about language with a capital L, not necessarily about a specific language. Um, let me take you through some of the, uh, the basic definitions of language as, um, as linguists have defined it. Um, on this slide, what you can see is several layers uh, that, that linguists use uh, to describe uh, language. Each of them has their own, what we call, levels of analysis. So, um, at the most fundamental level, uh, you can characterize language in terms of their sounds, um, classifying certain language sounds that languages find inter- important and interesting to distinguish between. Um, and that, uh, in technical jargon, is known as the uh, study of phonology. Uh, linguists also, there's some linguists who specialize in the study of words and how words are, uh, are made up. And uh, words are not just uh, labels for things. Uh, that's one of the definitions of words. A noun is a, is, a, is a word that stands for a thing. But words also are combinations of uh, parts of words. So if you think of something like uh, unglue uh, to come apart uh, from where things are glued together to unglue, uh, it consists of two morphemes, un and glue, uh, and so the, the ways in which words get combined to make new words is the study of, of morphology. Uh, some languages do it much more actively than others. Uh, English, I guess, is a language that's uh, somewhere in the uh, uh, not-so-active category in terms of word formation. The words like uh, languages like Turkish are known to have extremely active uh, word formation processes, and so anyway, that's just one way of uh, thinking about uh, a level of language that you analyze in terms of its word composition of words. Uh, a lot of attention has been paid to sentence structure, uh, which is uh, the level known as syntax. And um, so, one way in which people are familiar with the study of syntax is through uh, drawing uh, tree diagrams in grammar school, uh, where you take the structure of a sentence and try to parse it into phrases, uh, into clauses, and how uh, they might, uh, certain elements of it might substitute for other parts, and that is the study of syntax. Uh, If you uh, think about language, language is is important not just for the structure of the way words are put together, but in terms of the meaning that's conveyed to them. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, so even though the syntax may be different, the meaning conveyed might be uh, the same. The boy hit the ball, the ball was hit by the boy, are presumably similar, convey similar meanings, uh, but, uh, uh, but the word order is different. Uh, so those would be sentences that are different at the semantic level. Uh, so what the relationship is, let's say, between the subject of a sentence uh, and the verb uh, and the object of the sentence, um, uh, while uh, you might have uh, a, a grammatical structure that's identical, uh, such as uh, the door closed uh, versus the boy ran, uh, the, in both cases you've got a noun and a verb, which is the subject and the object. Uh, if you think about it, in the boy ran, 
the boy is the agent of an action. The boy is the one who is doing the running on his own uh, volition, presumably. Uh, whereas something like the door closed, you know that the door closed not on its own. The door closed because the wind blew it shut or somebody pushed it and closed it. And so uh, semanticists classify those two as very different, even though a syntactician would say that they're different sentences. The semanticist would say, oh, that's very different. What the boy is doing is he, the boy is the agent of the action, whereas the door closed, the door is more like an instrument. It's something that somebody is causing it to do. So that's the study of semantics. <coughs> um, you can also think about language in terms of rhetoric, in terms of the, uh, the intent of what's being accomplished by, uh, by, the, by the sentence. So... Um, I might ask somebody to close the window uh, by saying, please clo close the window. Uh, and the, if you analyze it in terms of my intent, uh, it is really to have the, clo the window closed. And I can have that accomplished in, in, in a number of ways, regardless of the structures, I can say, you know, point out you know, uh, that the window needs to be closed getting cold in here, the rain is coming in, various ways in which you can accomplish the same thing. So people who study pragmatics try to analyze language in terms of its, uh, its various um, uh, functions in interaction, and, um, and that's an important level of analysis. Uh, finally, you can also think of language in terms of what sociolinguists call um, social membership. So the study of sociolinguistics is the use of language to um, to reflect and often to mediate uh, social relationships and membership in uh, in groups of uh, people who speak uh, the, the, the similar language or the same language. So um, um, the, the most regions of the country speak different languages, about depending on social class. Uh, the use of particular words that mark and that deviate from what's called standard language, uh, the use of paint, the use of y'all in the South, things like that are me markers of membership in certain social groups, either geographically defined or social, uh, in terms of, of um, the social status or the socioeconomic status of the, of the person. Uh, and... Uh, Aspects of, of language that mediate social uh, membership and relationships is known as sociolinguistics. So each of those are, are different levels of analysis. Uh, linguists found, find themselves uh, 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 studying different aspects of it. Usually there are specialists who study specific aspects of it. And um, as you'll see when you do the problem-based unit for this, um, uh, for this session, uh, linguists do study all of these, but um, a lot of the interest and, and a lot of what's relevant for our part of, of this, or for this part of the course, as far as we're concerned, uh, in second language acquisition, uh, will have to do more with um, the structure of language, and partly um, it's, uh, it's one aspect of language that people feel they understand the best, not necessarily that that is the most important part of language, but it is the part that people at least believe that they understand the best.